For the privileged climbers trying an ascent of Everest, or Mount Komalangma as it's also known, this year has brought a new challenge. Overcrowding at the summit. And with only a window of two or three days to make the final push, many climbers have found themselves waiting in line to claim victory over the highest peak in the world. But the industry that's developed around the mystique of Everest, or Komalangma, is exacting a cost on the Himalayas. Tens of thousands of tourists trek to base camp every year, leaving a trail of waste that's impossible to remove from these remote areas. And every year, temperatures rise, melting the snow that used to cover base camp. The Himalayas are undergoing a dramatic change. The mountains are some of the most uh, vulnerable areas to climate change, and that impacts not just mountain people, but uh, people downstream. Uh, and we could easily argue for the rest of the world. In the shadow of Everest, a dangerous sign of that impact. Imja Lake, first identified as a small pond in the 1960s. Now it's a huge glacier lake, over a kilometer long, containing millions of cubic meters of melted glacier water, swollen by climate change and threatening to break its banks. As temperatures rise, it grows bigger every year. The communities in the valley below have long lived with the threat of flash floods from the mountains above. But now they have much to lose. A huge tourist industry has been built up along the trekking trails to base camp. Nima runs the Buddha Lodge, a small guest house that caters to trekkers throughout the season. Her busy kitchen provides food for hungry visitors on their way to base camp. The guests, grateful for a warm night after the often treacherous weather outside. She's lived in the village of Pakding all her life, and with the tourists have come growth and prosperity. But little else has changed here over the years. The narrow pathways and steep climbs make it hard for the developers to move in. And Nima still remembers the last time a glacier lake burst, turning the rivers into raging torrents that swept away everything in their path. Video of the lake burst shows a huge swell of muddy water rushing down the valley. The damage was devastating. And in these remote areas where resources and manpower are scarce, Nima tells me it took years to recover. The lake that burst was a third of the length of Imja and contained far less water. If Imja Lake breaks its banks, the devastation would be much greater. From the air, the turquoise river that runs through the valley seems quaint and picturesque. But imagine it raging with over a million cubic meters of water, carrying huge boulders in its current. The communities on its banks wouldn't stand a chance. The threat of glacier lake bursts is already well known. The UNDP has been monitoring the situation for some time and noted with alarm the rapid expansion of Imjal Lake. 
In 2014, when we did this uh, assessment, the lake, uh, the, the the area of the lake becomes 1.48 square kilometer from a teeny square meters uh, square meter. So the train was very high. The increment rate was one of the highest among other glacial lakes. So that was alarming in 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 our sense. That was really dangerous. Just 40 years ago, Imjau was a small pond that's barely marked on the map. Now it holds an estimated 75 million cubic meters, swollen with water that's melted from the glaciers. But how do you fix a naturally formed lake of 5,000 meters with minimal equipment? And Nepal Army uh, showed their interest, and because they were, they had a Mi-17 kind of helicopters and very high altitude soldiers, and and so and so forth, so they agreed on it. Starting in 2016. The Nepalese army and the UNDP have been working to bring the lake under control. It's a logistical nightmare. The area is only accessible by large helicopters winding a perilous route over the mountains. One crashed in the course of this work. Even when they land, the chopper can't shut down for fear the engine will ice up. Bad weather, high winds, heavy snowfalls and freezing temperatures. Only a handful of men can work at this altitude, and only for a very limited window of time. So we had to really rush. We have to really make the things happen, and, and, and so it was really difficult in a way. A channel dug into the mountainside has allowed the controlled release of 15 million cubic meters of water and lifted the pressure behind. Solar sensors have been placed to warn of any breach or flood that could hit the villages below. They've managed to hold back the lake but these are only temporary fixes, and the threat is far from gone. We found that there are still six lakes which needs immediate attention. There are lakes which are growing, and their risk is, is getting higher, because there is, a, there is high temperature increment in the high altitude area, keeping the risk more in the meltings of the glacier. We consider that is uh, priority one. The villagers below are aware there's a problem, but not how serious it is. Oh, Yenji Sherpa is a local official is. charged with maintaining <laughs> evacuation <laughs> drills. The evacuation route is just a small path up a very steep hill. And when I ask if she'd been told of the UN's concerns, the answer is no. No. The trails that run down the valley side are the only route in and out of this part of Nepal. Donkey trains carry food and building supplies, anything that's needed by the locals. And trekkers and tourists bring in vital revenue. There are signs like this warning of the risk of flooding all the way on this trail, all the way up to Everest Base Camp. The problem is, they're all in English, so for the local population, they mean nothing at all. Like the suspension bridges that span the steep valleys on the path to Everest, this region hangs perilously in the balance. While politicians overseas debate the reality of climate change, here they're seeing very real and present dangers. At the Institute of Mountain Development in the capital Kathmandu, they've been monitoring the changes in the Himalayas. Satellite imagery shows glaciers melting at an alarming rate, losing an estimated 8 billion tons of water every year. In case of, uh, you know, glacier change, glacier recession, and I think it's, it's, it's pretty clear um, that it is because of climate change, because there can not be any other reason which Dr. Arun Shrestra has been studying the glaciers of the Himalayas for decades. His research suggests that even if current carbon emission targets are met, the Himalayas will lose a third of its glaciers by the end of the century. 80s to 2010, uh, in those years, the area loss has been around 20, uh, 20%, 20, 25%, depending where we are. Temperatures have also risen faster in the Himalayas than elsewhere by approximately one and a half degrees. And while the glaciers won't disappear, unchecked global warming
could reduce their size by two-thirds. The glacier size can reduce dramatically, you know, 50%, 60% less than what we have now. Sandwiched between the booming industrialized zones of India and China, there's no escape for the Himalayan mountains. But these changes are taking place in remote and sparsely habitated areas. How important is the health of the glaciers for the rest of us? Think about Yellow Yangtze River, uh, but also Indus Ganges, Mekong, and five more rivers. So in those river basins, about 1.9 billion people live. That's about a quarter of humanity living just downstream of the mountains and some way getting water resources uh, from mountains. Many of the communities that live along those rivers rely on water for their fisheries and farming. Even small changes in water flow upstream are having a profound impact on the lowlands. And the glaciers also play a vital role in cooling hot monsoon winds and regulating seasonal rainfall. As they shrink, weather patterns are becoming more unpredictable. The hazard of floods and droughts will increase, right? We might get more rain, but more intense rainfall events. And in addition, uh, much more drought periods. So we have to be prepared for more disasters. The mountain communities in the Himalayas are already seeing those changes taking place. Less snowfall in the winter means water sources are less plentiful. The rich soil of their terraces now dry and hard to plow. Crop yields are already far less than they were in the past, a big problem for people who need to be self-reliant. One of the things you notice in these remote mountain communities is they are very ecologically aware. They can't afford to waste much because it's so hard to bring anything in. The problem is they can't control climate change. That's all happening elsewhere. There is very little they can do about it. Living in the shadow of Everest has always been hard. But climate change is bringing threats the people here never foresaw. And even the future of these majestic peaks that have stood unchanged for millions of years may now be under threat. For Assignment Asia, I'm Tony Chang.